So have you been trying to buy something and they told you, um, it's going to be about 12 weeks. This has been happening to people all across the country. Why? Because of the global supply chain. COVID completely disrupted the global, global supply chain. You had individuals who, were, who, who could not go into factories to reduce capacity. You might have tried to call some folks and they said, sorry, nobody's in here. Well, guess what? That was almost all of 2020. Folks begin to slowly ramp up in 2021, but they have not been able to catch up. Look, I got some new golf clubs, and when I ordered them, they said, they'll be here in 12 weeks. Normally, it was two weeks max, these custom golf clubs. Well, uh, President Joe Biden realizes it is a problem, realizes many companies are running out of products, and guess what? They can't move products for the Christmas shopping season. It's going to make it take a huge hit to the U.S. economy. He says help is on the way. Some good news. They're going to help speed up the delivery of goods all across America. After weeks of negotiation and working with my team and with the major union retailers and freight movers, the ports of Los Angeles, the port of Los Angeles announced today that it's going to be, begin operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This follows the Port of Long Beach's commitment to 24-7 that it announced just weeks ago. 24-7 system, what most of the leading countries in the world already operate on now, except us, until now. This is the first key step toward moving our entire freight, transportation, and logistical supply chain nationwide to a 24-7 system. Now, President Biden says the two California ports account for more than 40% of all goods that enter the United States. Supply chain, folks, is a system of organizations, people, activities, information, and resources involved in supplying a product or service to a consumer in commerce. Joining us right now is Lieutenant General, retired Lieutenant General Russell Honore. Uh, not too sure about this plan. He joins us now from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All right, Lieutenant General Honore. So what people don't understand, and those of you in the you serve in the military do understand, you can send troops somewhere, but you don't make a decision to send troops anywhere around the world unless you know how to get supplies to them. Air, water, ground. And even if you get it, fly it over there, even if you put it on a ship, how are you going to transport it once it gets off that ship, off that plane, in order to reach those particular troops? COVID exposed uh, this problem. And for, the la for almost a year, we got ships literally sitting off the coast just with goods on it. And folks are trying to figure out how in the hell to get their stuff off of those ships, and some are paying a higher premium to be able to get those products. Um, how major of a problem is this? Uh, it could be end up being a national security issue, which it is, because if uh, this affects our economy and affects our way of life, while there are leisure stuff on those ships, there are many essential things that we need to sustain our manufacturing. And our manufacturing sustain our economy. Our economy is what make our democracy work. Without our economy reworking, uh, we would be like any other developing country. The economy has to be secured, and the way we secure that is through trade and logistics. It will have national implication, uh, not only for Christmas, but to keep our manufacturing system rolling. This started over a decade ago with U.S. industries focused on cheaper, better, quicker. Uh, then they went into and developed a just-in-time delivery. Uh, that was a pipe dream, because every time we got a hurricane or a storm, uh, just-in-time delivery without having stocks on hand to run manufacturing, they disrupt manufacturing and drive the price up. This is the problem that is creating us driving the price of goods and stuff, things that they do put together in America because they don't have the supplies rolling. That that was a, a pipe dream. And then they went into calling this supply chain. Uh, I never was comfortable with the concept. Uh, I believe in logistics, as you described it earlier, 
which requires leaders to anticipate. The problem is our transportation system is unregulated. It is not regulated from the perspective of who runs the port. We got much of our port is all, is operated by foreign company, countries. All the containers are regulated by the countries that own them, and the majority of them are foreign owned, many in Korea, Taiwan, as well as Singapore and China own most of those containers. And the trucking industry is very competitive because they have trouble treating drivers because they want it cheaper, better, quicker. They want the drivers to get there quicker, they want to pay them less, and they want to give them less benefits. They are essential workers. And the way we've structured the port systems, it causes us to move, have to move more stuff by truck than by train. This has to be fixed and the president is headed in the right direction. And I think he needs to watch this for a few weeks. And if he need to, he can send a couple thousand army drivers there that can drive everything at that port. I lived on the port of Daman in Saudi Arabia for three months, unloading ship with soldiers from the 7th Transportation Brigade. They can handle everything that's at that port to include the containers, Roland. And see, and that's the thing right there we we'll talk about how is this impacting the rest of the country. Well, if you don't have the available goods, you go into a store, why in the hell am I employing people? Because ain't nothing to sell. Uh, and so this is having huge economic ramifications. I've already seen where companies are freaking out saying, if this doesn't get solved right now, you can forget Christmas sales. A number of retailers, their entire year is predicated on Christmas sales. Absolutely. Uh, it comes back to the economy. Uh, we, must, we must protect the economy, just like we got to protect our democracy. It's right up there. And it's reliable on the transportation system to get goods from the port to the shelves. And over time, we've sort of taken that and left it in the hands of an unregulated industry, Roland. It's not regulated. You see the president calling these people in and asking them for cooperation. Uh, when we went through deregulation going all the way back to the Reagan era, we deregulated the transportation system to let the economy run it. Well, what we end up with most of the stuff at our port is owned by foreign companies, and they don't want to pay the overtime. The other thing we got out of synchronization with, we went to five days a week port operation, daylight only, whereas the people are shipping to us, they work 24-7 loading ships. And they come to ports that only operate five days a week uh, because the companies don't want to pay the overtime and they don't want to hire more people. I was talking to a young man in the last few days. It took him two years to get a job at a port. Veteran from the Army, all the clearances required. It is like a nepotism system to get a good job at the port, which many of our people raised their families on in the port of New Orleans until they went to containers. This is ridiculous. We've got to, this is a national security issue, and we've got to stop acting like victims. We've got to use the power of this nation to solve this problem, Roland. So this plan for the president, do you agree with it? Do you think it will work? If not, what should be done? Well, I, I remind you, uh, the fine printer on that is a 90-day agreement. So it gives Congress time to get all these bills that they got backed up and then figure out what we're going to do to get control of this industry. Because the big boys like Apple and Amazon and Walmart and uh, Target, they're moving the high-end system. They've Uberized the shipping industry and get the small ships that do break bulk that can offload containers in selected ports where they move the stuff that costs over $1,000 each and have their own shipping lines set up using smaller ships. In the meantime, the stuff that the middle class need, like television and refrigerators and stove, are going to dry up because we've given all those industries up to be made stuff made overseas because the companies can do them cheaper and give a high margin on the stockholders. This is ridiculous. we got to reset uh, America, create more jobs here. But in the meantime... The president's headed in the right direction, but this is not a permanent fix. We've got to make sure that the unions uh, are not shutting people out from getting jobs. They encourage more people to get jobs, and they need a 24-7 workforce at the port. 
In the meantime, the president can speed this up by providing drivers to help the transportation industry, just like we provided doctors, nurses, and hospital staff to help the doctors. Nobody complained about that, and those soldiers are standing by if they're needed. All right. Reti Retired Lieutenant General Russell Honoré, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much, sir. Have a good day. Folks, back to our whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Betty is saving big holiday shopping at Amazon. So now, she's free to become Bear Hug Betty. Settle in, kids. You'll be there a while. Ooh, where you going? Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. I support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, there's a difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> On the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Like, wow. Roland was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. On. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?